my name is Eric, engineer here at 74 Weld. Uh, I wanted to put my Jeep up in there and walk you guys around it. Um, there's not really a lot to it. It's a pretty bare bones build, but I wanted to show it to you guys because, you know, not only do I work here, but I, I'm a customer. I have all the, the parts on this Jeep and I actually daily drive it. This is my commuter vehicle. And um, so I wanted to show you guys how I set it up, but also kind of give you a firsthand experience of what it's been like to daily drive on portals for the past two years. So uh, as you can see, it's on 40s. Um, anytime you have a big tire on a vehicle, you're kind of going to have a little bit of a detriment to that. It's a lot of mass to push. Um, you know, people typically re-gear. That's what our portals are for. Um, but, you know, other than the actual weight of the tire, it's a pretty normal experience, you know. You don't really get all of the negative vehicle dynamics that you typically would from, you know, a, a high mid-arm kit where you're gonna be, you know, hunting lanes, going all over the road and everything. Um, you know, it's pretty planted when you drive it and everything's nice and quiet. That's actually one thing I like about the Milestar Patagonias is that it's a nice quiet tire. I can actually talk to my wife don't really have any gear noise or anything so you know it's a pretty pleasurable experience my commute uh, to get here is 60 miles each way so every time I come into work it's 120 miles on the vehicle we've got a Pro Rock 44 axle in the front yes did go with an upgraded housing um, you know obviously I don't have the Dynatrack diff cover on there uh, just wanted to I guess mention that nothing against Dynatrack I love Dynatrack um, they did portal axles with Axle Tech somewhere back around 2012. And so when we were coming out with these two years ago, around King of the Hammers time, um, basically I didn't want this vehicle to be confused with anything else out there. Not like it looks like Immortal Portal or Sand Trooper, but you know, people have already seen a Pro Rock 44 on portals. So just wanted it to look a little different. That's why I went with this fabricated diff cover. Yeah, so as far as steering goes, everything is completely stock. Uh, stock tie rod, stock drag link, stock track bar. Haven't had an issue with it yet. Again, as I mentioned in other vehicles, or in other videos, I'm not super hard on my stuff. We do go wheeling, we crawl out in Sand Hollow. I love going out to like Death Valley. I love going out to um, Mojave Desert, places like that. But for the most part, this is a commuter vehicle. Um, I guess just getting back to that. So I've put right around 36,000 portal miles on this car. That's between two sets of portals. The first set was right around 9,000, 10,000 miles. Um, and that was the first year. So that was between February and May of that first year. And then May we put on this set. So this set's gone 26,000 miles now. Um, again, all I've done is change the oil. So no real maintenance issues there. Um, yeah, again, stock links. Um, I have the TerraFlex, um, you know, quick release sway bar links. Um, that's actually the first thing I ever bought for a Jeep was this exact set of links. They've been on three different Jeeps at this point. All right, so coming around this way, I wanted to show the control arms. So these are the factory upper control arms. I haven't had an issue with them yet. Um, you can kind of see from the shot before and from now, the bushings are still nice and tight in there. Haven't worn them out. On the lowers, these are the TerraFlex. I think they're like 3 16 longer than stock. Um, they're just to, you know, clock your pinion a little bit. I did initially have a different set of aftermarket arms. I don't even know who this, they were. I got them on Craigslist. Um, ended up popping a bushing out of the side here, but these TerraFlex ones, haven't had an issue with them. And I'm sure if I had the factory ones, it wouldn't be an issue either. Um, JE Reel drive shaft. I've had that since, before I had portals on this, it was lifted about three and a half inches on 37s. So um, that's kind of a remnant from doing a Rubicon axle swap way back in the day. So this is the Rubicon Pro Rock 44. Just took all the guts out of the old Rubicon axle, put it in here. So it's a factory 410. So with the portals, that ends up being a 5.0. Personally, I think that's a great ratio for a commuter vehicle like this on 40s because, you know, once you start getting up into the 538s, at least with JK, um, you know, your revs get kind of high. Um, not even just JK, but the 2012 plus with the automatic doesn't have a lot of overdrive to it. So 
For example, when I was on 37s with the 538, I was maybe running like 3,500 RPMs on the freeway. Right now, I can keep it in that green zone at that 2,500 and under, you know, around 70, 75. And um, gas mileage is 15, 16 MPGs, actually, if you can believe it. So um, it's overall a very comfortable vehicle to drive. Uh, so again, you know, it is the Pentastar with the automatic transmission. Um, that's kind of an interesting note on the JK. So the automatic transmission in these is very, very picky. So when we did the first set of portals, it was a 1.19 gear reduction. So 410 times 1.19, 488, perfect. My super chips matched it up, great. Uh, when we went to the second revision, we went to a 1.22 ratio. And that was, we're kind of growing everything a little bit for strength. We went over it in the other video, but what that did was change my final drive ratio, 4.1 times 1.22 ends up being 5.0. Well, the Super Chips didn't have 5.0. It just has known gear ratios that people actually manufacture. This transmission did not like that. So that was kind of a learning lesson on that too. Ended up having to go with the Z Automotive because you can go in a hundredth of a, like a 0 0.01 increment to give whatever ratio you end up wanting to do. Um, but once that was all squared away, it's all good. No more granting shifting on the freeway or anything like that, so that's good. Uh, moving along, factory transfer case, nothing fancy. JE Reel drive shaft in the rear. Again, big shout out to JE Reel. They've always come through for me. They make a quality product very quickly. So again, that was a Dynatrack 44 in the front. And now in the rear, this is a Curry 60. Curry 60 in the rear. The reason we went with this one, we were working with Curry um, on the unit bearing stuff early on. And this is actually their JK LP60, just off the shelf as they would sell it. So um, when we were really thrashing to get this thing done for the first King of the Hammers, they just had one of these they could give us. It was great. Um, and we were able to bolt the portals right on. Again, don't have the Curry diff cover. It's nothing against Curry. Love those guys. It was really track bar clearance. So. These guys are set up with um, you know, pretty high pinion angle. They're ready to go for lifted vehicles. But when we originally did this, we wanted to show it on a factory suspension. So this track bar at ride height was sitting right here and just hitting that diff cover. So we ended up getting this out of a junkyard and slapping it on. Uh, you can see a bunch of RTV down here. So even with portals, um, ended up kind of grinding this on a boulder at one point. So you know, get a lot of ground clearance, but if you go big enough, you're still gonna hit it. So um, factory track bar, again, the Fox 2.0 IFP shocks, leveling springs, nothing big. Um, we do have the JT brakes on here. So this is what we have been shipping everything with. We're looking to go to a Willwood with a combination parking brake on it. So, um, this was kind of an interesting one when, when we built it because um, at the time it was really difficult to get stuff. So it was like 2022, early 2022, and um, we couldn't get the actual, all the different parts, like the slides and everything. So that's actually kind of a Frankenstein of a JK caliper slide with a bushing pressed into the JT caliper bracket to get everything to work with some other monkey machine rotor that we ended up doing, but it's worked out pretty well. When you order stuff, it's completely dialed. This was a, you know, R&D push that we had. Um, I've got the factory upper control arms on here. Again, no issues. Rock jock lower control arms. That was just to be able to clock this down. So went with adjustable lowers because you can make them longer, pull the pinion angle down to more of a factory pinion angle. Um, whereas if you go with an upper, you have to make them shorter and then they only go so short. So um, that's why I ended up doing that. All right, as I mentioned, it is pretty bare bones. Just did a nice little fender chop here, but wanted to kind of show you what it ends up looking like with just an inch and a half leveling kit. This, these are JK factory with axles with uh, 5.8 inch backspace wheels, 13 and a half inch wide tires. 
you know, it doesn't end up being super tall, super wide. You just get a lot of ground clearance in the middle. Yeah, so this guy here, this was Trail Hero 2022 on Milt's Mile and um, flopped over a little bit. So, whoops. Flopped <laughs> over, tell us more. So, um, I don't know the name of the obstacle on Milt's Mile, but it's the one where, what? It, yeah, I know it's Milt's Mile. I don't remember the obstacle name though, but it's kind of like a bowl where you're going up on the left side and then your driver's side tire re in the rear falls into a hole. And so people just keep going, you know, backing up, coming up over so that they can go up the side of the bowl. And I was kind of like, you know, maybe in a marginal position. And um, we thought I was good. And I kind of put a little too much throttle and just ended up falling over so that was the first time i've ever actually flopped a rig so as far as flopping a rig it was about as good as you can get so you know just got a little door damage i mean none of the doors really fit the same anymore and it leaks a little bit but aesthetically i mean i don't think it looks that bad so <laughs> these i pulled out of the trash um oh back here uh, so this was another kind of casualty of that flop I ended up crushing this guy in here and like kind of crumpling this up. So I put a little belching beaver logo over it. And that's another thing. So like everyone, for the longest time I ran it without a rear bumper. And um, that was mostly just cause I didn't want to buy a rear bumper. So um, yeah, year and a half without a rear bumper or whatever. And then I was like, everyone keeps giving me a hard time about it. So I pulled this one back off of the rack. Cause um, when we initially did the King of the Hammers, it was like, all right, I want it on factory suspension. It was a weekend thrash. I didn't really have time to trim anything. So um, all I did was take the bumper off, take all the fenders off and just go to the hammers. And then when we got back, I had a little more time. So I hit shears on this, put these back on. But then if you've ever tried it on a JK, trying to get big tires with the factory bumper, it comes down here and just smashes into there. So, you know, I tried to match the lines a little bit, master fabrication there. Uh, so yeah, I don't know many people running 40s with a factory rear bumper, but you know, still have a toe point, still have a toe hitch, hell yeah. So that ends up being good. You kind of scrape that up instead of everything else. Um, used to have a tire carrier, not anymore. I was actually running a 37 on the back for a while, but I got a lot of crap about that too, because people would say, oh, well that's not gonna help you when you know, you're off road. And it's like, yeah, I know, but whatever. Uh, zip tied on this light here. I feel like most people have done that at some point. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, yeah, it's a quirky vehicle, but you know, I guess I'm cheap, so. <laughs> Not that, oh, one funny thing. Well, I don't know if it's that funny, but when we were initially doing all this and even back before at my old job, I would always load stuff in the back. So I get a lot of crap about this too, cause I've had axles rolling around back there. So it just hammers the back here. So yeah, that's another. Everyone does their walk arounds with like all their bitching stuff. And I feel like I get a hard time cause there's not much to it, but I actually like it like that, so. My name's Eric, I'm an engineer at 74 Weld. This is my Jeep, I love it. Sorry for being awkward, thank you for watching. <laughs> so.